Yosemite National Park in the Sierra Nevada mountains is not just a great valley, but it was actually the first national park that I visited as a child growing up. For us to enjoy the beauty and tranquility of this park is really a tribute to the community of GIS professionals that are working to manage and maintain more than 1,000 square miles of wilderness. Their work is making a difference, and their work is challenging. So to help them and you, we're focusing ArcGIS 9.4 on simplifying and streamlining workflows. I'm going to share with you the first nine innovations with ArcGIS 9.4 desktop. Starting at number nine on our countdown list, you'll see a new upgraded user interface, a new user experience. The upgraded look includes dockable windows that can automatically hide. As the new table of contents hides, it leaves more real estate on the map and more real estate, sorry, excuse me, more real estate on the screen for your map. And as the window comes and goes, you'll notice the map does not need to redraw every time. If you like, you can go ahead and pin it open in the usual manner. The other thing we've added at your request is a new catalog window that's embedded in ArcMap. You can use this for data access and data management. The catalog window can be docked. It can also hide. So when you want to go in and add new data, like a geologic layer to your map, we can browse to the location. We can qu quickly find the data we're interested in, review the metadata and the description, find out if it's what we want, and then we can easily add that to the map. We expect these underlying framework changes will greatly improve your productivity. Number eight on the countdown list has to do with attribute tables. If I open up the attribute tables for the geologic units, you'll see attribute tables are now displayed in a dockable window that hides. You'll see a new toolbar across the top, giving you easier access to the tools you need. You can open multiple tables using the tabbed interface at the bottom. So I can look at selected records from one table, fields of interest highlighted in yellow from another table, and you can choose to arrange these tables in any way you like. For example, two windows docked side by side to make it easier to compare. When you're finished, you can <laughs> When you're finished, you can hide the window and you can continue on. Number seven on our list is about a new search capability to complement the add data dialog. If we take a closer look at Yosemite Valley, you'll see there's a number of climbing locations. Climbers should be aware of falling rocks. Well, where was that rock fall hazard data that I had somewhere on my disk drive or on my network, and how quickly could I locate that? We can use a new search tool that allows me to go in and type in that I'm looking for the hazard data, and with sub-second responses, we can locate the data we're interested in. We Okay, we can go in and we can add additional keywords. For example, I don't want all the hazard data for all of the park service, but I just want that data that's associated with Yosemite Valley. Add additional keywords, use special keywords like points, lines, polygons, or layer file to further refine and get to the data that you quickly want. Once you've located that, drag and drop it into the map, and we're ready to go. The search interface can be used for more than just data. It can also be used for searching for geoprocessing tools and analysis. If I come over here and say I'm interested in the hydrology tools, I can search for hydrology and find all the toolboxes and tools that reference that name or those keywords. If I type in intersect, you can watch the auto completion trying to help me identify the right tool. Once we've found that, we can easily open it and execute it as desired. Search represents an incredible new capability for fast access to your data as well as your analytical tools. Number 9876. Number six on our countdown list is reporting. Let's take a look at those climbing area locations, and I've selected 44 climbing locations that I want to go visit. If I want to generate a report, you'll find that we've got a new reporting capability. If we open up the reports, we can create a report pretty much as you'd expect. We can go through, select the fields that we want. We can choose to only use the selected set. There's other options that you'd need, such as how do you want to group the data? How do you want to sort the information? You'll then find that there's a series of templates, predefined templates, to make it easier to make nice formatted reports. 
Once you've got that report, you can, of course, print it. You can go into the Edit dialog, change the design, and most importantly, you can now save the report so that you can later re-execute it with a different selected set. Number five on our countdown list is going to be about geoprocessing and model builder. Let's go to a different part of the park, the area around Half Dome, and we'll go ahead and turn on our aerial imagery. Within Yosemite National Park, the Park Service uses GIS to manage the park, but they also use it for search and rescue. If the last known location of a lost hiker was this res bullseye, they can use geoprocessing models to predict where that person may have gone, how quickly they can travel, and the most likely location to find them. If we want to access that model, we can use our catalog window. There's a new home button that'll take you to the project or the map workspace, where your maps, your tools, your analysis results may all be stored. We can then open up that model, and you'll see there's a couple new improvements with Model Builder. 